Hey everyone, how you doing? Uh, I know it's been uh, what a few weeks uh, since I went live, and uh, I'm going on almost two weeks since I made a video for my YouTube channel. So you guys, I just want to say this, okay? Let's have a discussion. Hey James, Dustin, uh, Dustin, man, bro, you're awesome, bro. Good to see you, James. Good to see you guys. Hey, make sure you actually uh, stay in tune, and if you want to, please uh, invite other people. You know, you guys, I just want to have, uh, you know, a great discussion. Let's have let's have a talk. Let's voice some concerns. And I'm pretty sure all the concerns are legitimate. Right. But the thing is, this channel, just a warning for the easily offended. So I have to put an emphasis on the quotation marks for you. OK, this is not for the easily offended. OK, or those who are actually being indoctrinated, not educated. OK, this is for the free thinker. OK, a.k.a. conservative or whatever. But um. My intention is not to offend, you know, to offend people, but I'm just to offer you a different narrative uh, to something that you are not used to. I mean, especially if you are involved in the mainstream media, if you're used to hanging out in angle, uh, you know, echo chambers or anything like that. And you're not used to anyone espousing a different point of view. So anyway, I'm definitely open to opposing point of views. Um, I'm definitely open to, you know, Hey, different stances, and I allow people to espouse on those. So I can even invite you into live, and then you can even express your point of views, and then we can actually just focus on the differences, and we can point out the you know how they conflict, and then um, if we can come to some kind of a peaceful resolve, yes, I'm fine with that. But I'm always open to be a student of life, so I'll always offer this. <clears throat> I have a certain stance that I do have. And yes, some some things that I do not make a mountain to die on. Some things are a mountain to die on. Some things are worthy of compromise and some things are not. But I always tell the person, convince me, convince me. So I like to address popular issues. I, I don't care if they're political, religious, uh, if they're racial, uh, et cetera. The thing is, I believe that anything should op should be open for a discussion just to having a more informed populace. I believe one of the things that is completely hurting us and unfortunately, and yes, I mean this, unfortunately, I am considered a millennial because I was born in 82 in December. So I'm considered a millennial, unfortunately. And the reason why I say unfortunately is because being a millennial right now, they have a reputation uh, for being known to lack critical thinking skills, which I uh, completely sympathize with that position. Uh, I agree with it 100 percent unequivocally. But anyway. <clears throat> The thing is, the reason why I'm opening up a bridge, as I should say, for dialogue or a extending the olive branch is because we understand. And I also understand myself that um, a lot of issues are completely just polarized. They are exaggerated. Um, a lot of people want to go to the extreme. Now, just to preface, OK, before I expound on a few of my positions that are not up for compromise, okay, where I'm actually standing solid and I will not budge. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just say this, okay, one more time before I get into it. This channel, or I should say, sorry, not my channel, because I'm so used to being on my YouTube channel, but the thing is, when I go live on Facebook, it is not to offend people, but it's to offer you a different narrative from what you're used to, especially if you are a college student and you are going to one of these universities and the reason why I said earlier, you're not being educated, you're being indoctrinated because our universities definitely should be a place where you are completely exposed to all different kinds of points of views and no one should be dictating the narrative. But anyway, <clears throat> let's jump right into it. First of all, of course, I am a Christian. I consider myself a conservative Christian. That means that the word of God is the word of God. And I do not have to misinterpret the scriptures or compromise the scriptures just to even fit my agenda. I make sure that I have to strip myself of my own agenda and then only lean towards the word of God. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, you know what? There's a lot of people 
who disagree with this, who disagree with that on the Bible. Here's the thing I'm talking about. If it's not a salvational issue, I really don't care too much about it. But one of the things is what I mean is that I do not change the word of God to fit my narrative is I let the word of God say and states what it clearly states, not inserting my own interpretation. That's the last thing I ever want to do. And it's called proper hermeneutics to approach the Bible with no presuppositions whatsoever. So that means that I am a non denominational Christian. That means I don't believe in a denomination. I don't believe in putting a title on me. I just say Christian because I am a Christ follower. So that's the only thing that I yield to. So with that being said, gay marriage, do I support it? Yay or nay? Of course, I do not support it. Do I consider it to be marriage? Absolutely not. Do I consider marriage a religious institution? Absolutely yes. Am I against anyone of the same sex having a civil union? Absolutely not. Do I believe that everyone is entitled to the same rights? Yes. Now, if you are a secular humanist, that's your belief system. But it's, as for those who are religious, marriage has always been a religious institution. That means that it came from God. And it's, it means that since it came from God, that God is the one who dictates what marriage is and not man. So I would never, ever accept the redefining or the redefinition of marriage. Never, ever. Hence, reason why I'm a conservative Christian. We do not bend or flex. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not afraid of the world. I'm not afraid of the people in this world because my Christ has conquered the world. That means that he has conquered you if you go against his word. But anyway, <clears throat> so with that being said and that point being highlighted, that's a non-compromise. I do not budge from it, but I still tell a person change my mind. But see, I just want to clear up a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people say, well, how can you be against gay marriage? I mean, that's bigoted. No, it's not bigoted. It's a different. It's an opposing point of view from which you are so used to, you know, uh, used to hearing. But the thing is, though, is that what you're so used to hearing is you do it your way. And that's OK. All truth is not relative. I'm definitely not with postmodernism. That means that, hey, whatever I believe and think is right is right. No, I believe in absolute truth. I believe in absolute morale. I believe in absolute standards of truth and morale. And I believe that is Jesus Christ and all truth and all absolute morale comes from Jesus Christ. And uh, if you don't believe that, hey, I always tell a person, well, I changed my mind. Give me some kind of an educated argument. And you're respectful. We can have an academic debate and I will be open to hear any kind of opposing points of view, whatever. OK. Um, <clears throat> another thing, too, I had um, one of my subscribers and also a good friend of mine uh, who is uh, here on um, Facebook. I haven't met him personally, but he wanted me to he, he wanted to hear my uh, opinion, uh, opinions about the pope. First of all, let me just tell you something. I'm I'm not this is look, you guys, I want to say this, okay? I'm not throwing any shade towards the Catholic Church. Do I agree with Catholicism? Absolutely not. Do I agree with the traditions, um, the rituals and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely not. Have I met some extremely pious Catholics? Yes, I have. So this is not to throw shade on the Catholic Church, but I'm not down with the Vatican. I'm not down with organized religion that completely quenches the Holy Spirit or prevents the spirit from flowing freely. OK, I'm not um, up for a uh, loose interpretation of the scriptures. As I said before, I'm a conservative Christian. I believe in first century Christianity, the purest form of Christianity uh, before it was even tainted. So with the Pope. The Pope has said some very, very crazy things over the years, ever since he became the Pope. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if this is factual or not, but from some of the statements that the Pope has made. Hey, Eric, how you doing, brother? From from some of the comments that the Pope has made, it is obvious. It is blatant that this man does not read his Bible. And if he reads his Bible, he fails to submit to the Bible. Or maybe he might have our um, early onset uh, dementia or something like that. I don't know. But the thing is, I have read some of his um, 
his comments. OK, so I can't quote them verbatim because it's been a while since I read them, but I can tell you 100 percent without any doubt that some of the things I'm going to say that he's actually said. And this is a pope. This is supposed to be a religious leader. OK. He has said that all you have to do is be a good person. To get into heaven. Well, that's not biblical. It's not even remotely close to being biblical. That's called a universal appeal and a universal appeal to salvation. Christ does not work that way. He is the only way. He is the only Messiah. He is the only sacrifice. And you have to accept Christ, because if you don't accept the Christ, you definitely cannot see the Father. Christ said there is no way to the Father, but only through me. I don't know what is going on with this Pope, but he is completely flawed fundamentally. And I'm going to be honest with you, it is intellectually vexing to me, and it's appalling and egregious that someone can call themselves a religious leader and also forget the fundamental principles, practices, beliefs of Christianity, that Christ is the only way. There is no man that is good. Not even one is good. We cannot say that a person is good because our hearts are naturally wicked. So I have no idea what is going on with this Pope. Also, the Pope's open embrace of Islam. Now, you guys, is I'm going to tell you, OK, I'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm some huge historian or Mr. Know-it-all. No. But from what I have studied, Islam and Christianity are not compatible. They believe that their Isa, who is completely different from our Jesus. Oh, wow. Wow. He comes back at the end of times, according to the, the, the Muslim belief. And he says, hey, when I was gone away. I became a Muslim and you guys are deceived. Now you're going to convert and uh, or you die. That's not our Isa. That's not our Isa. OK, that's just one of the fundamental differences. OK, and then also we don't we don't accept uh, Muhammad as a prophet because one uh, according to biblical criteria to for a person to be a prophet, everything that this prophet says must come to pass. Muhammad never, ever made one credible prophecy. And also he um, broke all the Ten Commandments repeatedly, repeatedly, and also preached a completely different doctrine from what was heard. And also he got his revelation from an angel of light. And we all know if someone comes to you, especially an angel of light with a different doctrine, we know that that is a.k.a. Satan. So anyway, <clears throat> The Pope uh, openly embraced Islam and then also said that Islam is the religion of peace. I know just from my studies that in the Quran, there are over 214 kill swords of killed the Christians and the Jews. Now, this is me just stating fact, not hate. Now, if you guys uh, <clears throat> look at um, being educated and actually uh, espousing the truth is hate. Well, let me just tell you something. I don't think a person should be entitled to opinion. I mean, entitled to an opinion because they'll just be proven to be a pseudo intellectual. And uh, I wish not to refer to any ad hominems, but we just have to call the spade a spade. The Pope is completely fundamentally, uh, fundamentally flawed. And he is completely leading a lot of people blindly leading a lot of people into, let's say, hmm, doctrine of demons. A completely different doctrine that is actually taught in the Bible. And I'm, I'm going to be candid with you. I wish the Pope would actually uh, step down. But there were, there was also a prophecy that before the end of days or the end of time, that there would be a fake or a false Pope who were actually uh, going into the Vatican and he will spew nothing but blasphemy. And false doctrines. And it seems that if right now we are seeing that from this pope, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I, I don't know too much about his resume or anything else like that as well. Anyway, I wanted to get to the meat of potatoes. OK, I just wanted to use that as a, <clears throat> as a building block to the meat and potatoes. So you guys. 
with me being extremely conservative and also a Republican, because you can see that Trump flag behind me, you can also see my American flag. And pretty soon I will also have a Israeli flag because, yes, I am a Zionist Christian, which I believe is 100 percent biblical and can be substantiated by the Bible. And I will also have my Christian flag pretty soon. The thing is, they are expensive, especially to have them that size. But anyway, <clears throat> so. um. Eric, he was definitely uh, he was definitely voted in, you know, the whole little ritual they go in and they go in and they close the doors and they take all their votes and they do all this crap, whatever. I don't even believe in that hierarchy, to be honest with you. I don't believe in some kind of religious hierarchy like one man is, you know, the only one that's able to hear from God. No, we all have the Holy Spirit in us, those that submit and obey uh, to Jesus Christ. So anyway, I wanted to get to the meat, uh, meat and potatoes. Yes, the smoke, the smoke is just a signal uh, that they have actually elected a pope. Um, so to the meat of potatoes. Now, Eric, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but just keeping up the current events, right? Um, I've been completely baffled and just puzzled slightly uh, by a lot of things I have seen lately, especially in the media. And it's mainly concerning with liberal cities. This seems to be a common theme, especially in California, the sanctuary cities where they are actually abusing the rights of their citizens to protect non-citizens. I call that sedition, especially when you are willingly breaking the law. The federal law applies to each and every state in the United States and also every city. No one is above the law. But we are what we are seeing in uh, California, the, the grave sedition. I have no idea why our president won't just send the military in there and arrest these people for actually breaking the law, because I know if that would have been the ordinary citizen who was actually violating the law and the destruction of justice, we would be arrested and probably thrown under the jail. But we actually witnessed the double standards with Hillary Clinton in 2016. If you don't agree with me, review the election year of 2016 and see how much stuff she has gotten away with. But anyway, so back to these sanctuary cities or these liberal cities with their liberal policies. Now, <clears throat> this is not coincidental. This is factual. And this is what actually happens when you have a state or a city that is controlled by liberal policies. San Francisco, the people there, they make a lot of money. But let me tell you something. They are spending $33 million each and every year to clean up the streets in downtown San Francisco because it's becoming a tent city. Tent cities are starting to emerge in cities that are controlled by Democrats because of their policies. Reason why, let me tell you guys this, okay? When you have welfare that is given to people who definitely are not American citizens, what do you think that does to your economy? When you are trying to legalize people so fast and so rapidly, what do you think that does to your economy? It's called hyperinflation. What happens to your economy when people are pushing for a raise in minimum wage? Where do you think that money comes from? It takes away from the tax payer. It takes away more money. This is basically socialism. And I'm not a status. A status is a person who believes in implementing a law where the government has the right to punish you for not obeying to uh, obeying a law that they have implemented as far as being taxed. And they do it using force. I am anti-fascist. I am anti-status. Just to be honest with you, even though I am a Republican, but I am a conservative at heart. And, a, and some people might say that I'm more of a libertarian, but I consider myself to be a soft anarchist. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, whoa, he said he's a soft anarchist. No, anarchist does not mean that you don't want any rules, you don't want law, you don't want government. No, anarchist means that I can self-govern myself and I trust and I believe in the people's ability to be self-governed without a government dictating to us what we should do, especially using force in order to do it. Um, 
Uh oh, I saw some angry faces there. <laughs> hey, I'm just giving you guys clear and concise definitions. And I know a lot of you, like I said, a lot of you guys are not used to hearing this. But anyway, let's get back to the initial, the initial topic of focus here uh, with the sanctuary cities. So in California, people are becoming progressively broke, progressively homeless to they are defecating in the streets, urinating in the streets. And as I said it before, they are spending half of their budget, OK, for cleaning their city to spray down feces off the sidewalk. And then also in these tent cities, people are using needles to the point that it is so prevalent that it is on the ground that little children cannot even walk down these streets. How terrible is that? And yet, in these sanctuary cities, they are steady pushing the interests of non-citizens and putting the interests of non-citizens over their own citizens. I was reviewing some of the records of some of these people that the uh, attorney general and then also I believe there was a mayor or a governor or something that alerted uh, some of the illegals that there's going to be an ice raid. I reviewed some of the records of some of these people who was given an early alert so they can uh, evade capture. Some of these people are wanted for rape and murder, pedophilia and murder, drug dealing and pedophilia and rape and kidnapping and murder. And I'm 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 baffled by this because the duty of any congressman is to protect the interest of their people. I want someone to tell me how are you keeping your people protected by keeping people like this in your country who already are violating the law in the first place and they are violent offenders. Now, this is not a race issue. This is a law issue and it has always been a law issue. And to all my conservative brothers and sisters, one of the things that I have learned when you have a debate with someone who is a liberal, always stick to morale and always stick to principle. Liberals are good at red herrings and straw man arguments. You cannot let them pull you off of morale and principle because when every argument goes and it stays on course with morale and principle, you win. Do not go off course when you are debating a liberal. Always stick to morale and principle because they always want to deviate from morale and they always want to deviate from principle. They have to because they cannot survive having an argument with profound truth in comparison to absolute logical absurdities. Every statement or ideological stance that we see with these liberals is completely fallacious. Now, some of you guys might think, well, that's that's completely inflammatory. No, it is not, because it is highly evident and it is factually true. It's a fact. And um, what we're witnessing today is the tectonic entropy of what's of once was um, of what was once a great country. We are seeing it. We are being completely torn down from within. From our own cities. The sedition, how our citizens are beguiled into sedition against their government. We are noticing all of the tactics and the antics from the liberals as far as the race baiting. Here, let me tell you something, okay? What just happened? Let me give you a prime example, okay, of what I'm talking about as far as, hmm, let's see. Completely taking morale and also principle out of the equation. What just happened at Starbucks? Two African-American males went into Starbucks and they were loitering. They were breaking the law. They were asked politely over and over to purchase something or to leave. They refused to leave. So after 15 minutes, the cops were called. After the cops arrived, they deliberated with these two black males for several minutes. No, I'm sorry. 
Let me take that back. Let me track that for seven minutes. Literally, they explain to them why it is breaking the law because it is called loitering. And so they were arrested because they refused to leave. Rightly so. Bravo. Those cops did their job. What happened? They took morale and they took principle out of the argument. And what was played? What was replaced with those two? The race card. Because they were black. And here's the hypocrisy that I always have to focus on. On And I have to point out and I have to make it blatantly obvious the plethora of hypocrisy with this movement. They always say they want tolerance. They want equality for all people. And yet in the same breath, they push for double standards and unfair treatment and then to be exempt from the law just because they consider themselves a victimized minority group. That is demanding preferential treatment based on your race. And if that is their talking point and their stance, that makes them a hypocrite. And it's blatantly hypocritical for a person to keep pushing a false narrative and at the same time expect preferential treatment because of their race. And then if you are Caucasian, you're hit with the white privilege argument just because you're white. That is called blatant racism. But no, people who are law-abiding citizens, like those citizens in California, and you guys, this is what's gonna trip you out. Even in California, 74% of the Democrats do not support sanctuary cities. What is going on with their politicians not, not aiding and respecting the wishes of the people who put them in power? We are witnessing, I mean, sedition on a grand scale of epic proportions in American history that we have never seen before. And these people are getting away with it. And it's absolutely asinine that we are dealing with this level of sedition in our country. 74% of Democrats do not want California to even have sanctuary cities. And you know it's an overwhelming number for Republicans who definitely don't want it to be to be in the sanctuary cities in California. So what are these politicians doing? Do they really have the interests of their American citizens at heart? Absolutely not. When we get down to the core of it, they want more votes. They want more people to remain on their mental plantation just so they can stay in power. Let me tell you guys something. If we knew or a majority of the people knew the truth about the Democratic Party, the failure of their policies, no one would vote Democrat. So once again, California is a prime, a prime example of that. Look at L.A. Terrible completely in shambles. San Francisco, terrible, completely in shambles. Look at New York, New York, terrible. The Bronx, terrible. Oh, let's go all the way to Newton, one of the poorest cities in the country. Let's also go to Detroit, one of the poorest cities in the country. What do they all have in common? Liberal policies. You have to be completely moronic not to even tie together these obvious correlations. You have to be completely moronic. I mean, even look at Chicago. I mean, ding, ding, ding. So you guys, uh, sometimes it's really hard when I'm talking about these issues not to become overly passionate. And just because I've become overly passionate doesn't mean I'm irate or I'm belligerent. No, it just means that I'm completely passionate because I, not because I believe what I'm saying is true. It's just as I have done my research and I know what I am saying is absolutely true and there's no bias attached to it. But in today's society, they want to push you away from having absolute truth or making 100% factually correct statements. Flint, Michigan. I mean, yeah, I mean, the list is endless. The list is endless.
I mean, look at look at certain districts in uh, um, New Orleans. I mean, wow. Anywhere they have predominantly liberals. Trust me, the place is not thriving. It's completely depleted. The infrastructure is depleted. There's actually the infrastructure is virtually non-existent. Look at Baltimore. I mean, man, 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 man. The reason why I do these things, you guys, is because I care about my people. And when I say my people, I'm talking about the American people, not just black, not just Mexican or white. No, I'm talking about the American people who truly love their country and they love the United States Constitution. I could not imagine in a thousand years to burn a American flag. Let me tell you something. I'm one of those individuals. I know how to rightly reconcile American history. White history is a part of my history. As much as black history is a part of white history. We, we formed this country together. Do we have an ugly history? Absolutely. But as I alluded to in my other videos, this is not anything about ugly history and it's not a racial issue this is a spiritual issue because when you are a child of god we all are one in christ and we need to get rid of these racial politics which is nothing but complete digression and it pulls away from the objective the principle and the morale and it strips you of all all logic when you sit up there and you subject yourself or you subscribe to liberal ideology and, you know, when you think about how many people are completely depraved and they're witless and how they're just easily begowed into sedition, I want you guys to look at all these Democratic cities or a majority of these blue states and look at the tectonic entropy. Look at the conditions that their people are living in. We need you to take the Minnesota seat. Oh, yeah. You know, Keith Ellison. He published, you know, Eric, I'm glad you actually mentioned him. Did, did you know not so long ago, if you go to my YouTube channel, <clears throat> uh, I can't remember the title of it, it has so many videos. But anyway, this dude published a video talking about that our forefathers had a Koran because they love Islam. Keith Ellison and then also the rest of the Minnesota liberals actually published this as if it was actually true. No, our forefathers knew about Islam. Here, let me give you guys a history lesson, okay? Before we were even the United States, when we were the colonies, the Barbary pirates, aka Muslims, were kidnapping Europeans. They were kidnapping Europeans, okay, selling them as sex slaves and keeping them as slaves. And then our forefathers said, you know what? This cannot continue to happen. So boom, long and behold, the Marine Corps was formed. You know, I wish people would actually look at their history. Our forefathers kept the Quran so they can know thy enemy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go, Eric. Yeah. And that Antifa handbook on his desk. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe this. And then also while we're talking about the tectonic entropy and then also how people are being completely brainwashed or indoctrinated is a nice way to say it. What you guys know, I don't care anything about euphemisms. OK, if I believe a person is mentally handicapped, I might say retarded sometimes. I don't care about euphemisms. I'm not going to dumb down my terminology so that you're not offended. Who made these people the speech police or the thought police? Your freedom of speech is your freedom of speech. And I can't stand when a person says, oh, I don't agree with you. So that must be hate speech that you are a fascist. You are a complete fascist. I have had people I've had my have been my friends for years just because of the way that I'm talking right now. They have unfriended me. <laughs> Completely unfriended me. I mean, everything was kosher until I actually to till I started to share my opinions and my point of views and then also to substantiate my opinions and point of views. But I got un I got unfriended. I, I just think it's really crazy. You guys. Um, do I plan on getting into politics? Absolutely. Because here's the thing, you guys. If you do not control politics, 
you will be controlled by someone else's politics. Look at the microcosm right now that we are living in, in liberal Minnesota. I am continually vexed each and every day. Christianity is attacked each and every day. Christianity or Christians are the most persecuted group in the entire world with 200,000 Christians being murdered each and every year. Where are our protests? How come people are not marching for Christians? No one has a problem coming to a predominantly Christian country or going to predominantly Christian countries, but yet how come no one's protesting for Christians when they are burned and their daughters are kidnapped and they're raped and then Christians also thrown off of buildings? How come no one is mentioning how homosexuals are treated in the Middle East, but yet they want to complain and talk about Jesus Christ and treat us Christians as if we are the scum of the earth when we and our faith and our God is the one that moved mankind out of the dark ages? It's completely baffling to me is completely asinine to me that we have fallen so far away from the truth and we have God hating people controlling politics, entertainment, education, and et cetera, et cetera. They control the seven mountains of influence and yet passivity has crept into the body, fragmented the body because we have false doctrine. And now the body is rendered powerless because we're so fragmented and we have to pull ourselves back together and we have to get back to sound principle and sound truth. And we need to start standing on morale and principle again and pull our country back together. If you guys, I highly suggest that anyone who watches this video type in the matrix of liberty. Most people don't even know what that is, but it's at Plymouth Rock. The United States is great just because of our founding fathers. And let me tell you something. They were not racist. They were called Puritans, which was a dirty word back in Britain when they were escaping from tyranny. When you look at the, uh, the Matrix of Liberty, this is the building block to having a perfect country that is also basically somewhat a theocracy, but still secularism is still in there where you're not imposing on anyone's free will. But it's the building blocks of a true republic, the building blocks of true liberty. And you guys look at that or also look at a movie that is called. Um, Mm, I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, Monumental. Look up a movie called Monumental. You guys are going to get tons of unadulterated truth. Christ is the only reason why this country is the greatest country in history. Strongest country as well in history. And let me tell you something. We are turning our backs on God and we need to get back to Christ. Because look at this. And here we go. I'm about to get to even some more meat and potatoes while I'm on my tangent. Back then, I remember, if you thought you were something that you were not, and you try to convince people that you are something that you're not, you were called schizophrenic. You were called insane. You mean to tell me now, we have slipped so far into insanity you mean to tell me that I am blatantly a man? Even my biology says I am a man. You mean to tell me I can wake up tomorrow and I can say I'm a woman? Then I'm also going to pass legislation to make you agree to my delusions of grandeur? That is called insanity. Period. I am an African-American male. I can't wake up tomorrow and say I'm white. Now I'm transracial. You guys, what is going on with common sense? What is going on with absolute truth? Absolute truth, you can't argue with it. It does exist. It's not this all truth, this relative crap. <sighs> Fellas, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, my brothers and sisters, I'm deeply grieved spiritually. Spiritually, I am. I'm deeply grieved and I have to keep reminding myself each and every day to keep praying 
for those who are lost. And you guys, this is why I witness every day because we are living in a fallen society, but yet we have a certain demographic, or I should say a certain side of the spectrum that call themselves Christian that says to be passive and do nothing and watch everyone slip into the abyss. Not this guy, not this guy. The YouTube channel, all, all, all glory to God. It's almost at a million views. Now, are all those people going to agree with me? No, my job is to only plant the seed. That's my job is to only plant the seed. I want to invoke critical thinking skills. I want to plant their truth of Jesus Christ into as many people as possible. And let me tell you something. I am not perfect. I am still a sinful man, but I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm a saint and I'm covered in the blood of Christ. And I'm only justified by what he did and because of his blood. Can I get an amen, my brothers and sisters? We um we need to have a spiritual revival. We need to get back to truth. Let me tell you something. It may look like the enemy is winning, but the enemy has not won. The enemy has already lost. We are on the winning team and we need to stop acting like we are the losers when we already have victory. I'm sick of everyone falling for the counterfeit. It's time to get back to the truth. We need to start calling what is obviously absurd, absurd. And stop letting people stamp you with you are bigot, you're a racist, you're an Islamophobe, you're homophobic. Stop letting them stamp you with that. Stop becoming subjective, I mean, subjective or uh, susceptible to these liberal tactics that are completely in. Oh, my God, it's, 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 it's asinine. Only imbeciles can subscribe to this kind of stuff. And let me tell you something. When a person stamps you with these kind of labels, they have already lost the argument because they don't have a solid leg to stand on. They have nothing to substantiate their claims. This is why they're so quick to stamp you with everything. This is why us conservatives, this is why we actually go into academia and we slaughter them. That's because they do not have truth. They do not have wisdom. They do not have God. That's why we win, because we have God on our side. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Start proclaiming Christ. Start standing up for biblical truths. Start standing up for true American history, not liberal revisionist history. There's a movement happening, you guys, and it's global. Conservatives from all over the world are starting to rise up from the ashes and we are saying enough is enough. We are so sick of you treading on us. We are so sick of your oppression. We are so sick of your tyranny. We are so sick of you trying to dictate to us what we can and cannot say when no man has the right to tell us what we can and cannot say. Our rights are given to us by our God, not by man and damn sure not by government. Fellas, sisters, <clears throat> we need to get back to true love. True love is telling the truth, no matter what. The only reason why I got freed from gangs, the only reason why I got freed from selling drugs, guns, the womanizing, the sex and all that kind of stuff is because I had people that told me the truth. They said, Deron, you're acting like a little boy. You're scared, you're weak, and you're a wimp. And you need to start acting like a man. That's the truth. And that the truth shall set you free. And our country needs to be set free because right now we are ensnared by nothing but deception and liberal rhetoric, which is completely it's complete hogwash. And it tears down a country. If you don't think liberalism is a threat to the United States, look what liberalism has done to the black community. I want you guys to look at the black community. Let the black community be the poster child of what liberalism does to a complete people. And look at what liberalism is doing to a society. Look what liberalism is doing in Sweden. Look what it's actually doing in Germany. Look what liberalism is doing in our Western countries. We are being invaded by a Trojan horse, an ideology that believes in taking away your freedom of speech, your guns, and they have the right to murder you 
if you speak against what they believe in, this is what they're taught, and yet you have a problem with Christians who preach tolerance and love and who tell you the truth and we don't dictate to you what you can do, but we share our opinions, and yet we deal with your sacrilegious attacks on our faith each and every day, and you don't see Christians going out there blowing up schools. You don't see Christians going out there cutting people's heads off, and yet we are the most persecuted group on earth, and yet you do not see us acting like barbarians. But yet they want to attack us because we have Jesus Christ and Christ was so right. They will hate us because we belong to Christ because they hated Christ first. We know that you guys, we need to start standing on these truths. Oh yeah. Kanye West is speaking out. Yes, yes, yes. With Candace Owens, there's a movement happening. There's a movement happening. And here's the thing you guys, there are more conservatives than there are liberals. That's why they call us the silent majority, because they truly mean it. Just because you live in these metropolitans and, oh, yeah, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Everyone's a liberal just about. <laughs> no. Have you been outside of that city? There's tons of people that live outside of that city. Tons of people that live outside of the city. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. But also. Let's go back to California, Eric. Eric, they're thinking about passing a law now to make it illegal for anyone or business to actually try to help people to pull them out of the homosexual lifestyle. Hmm, curious. Every sin is acceptable to talk about besides homosexuality. Hmm. I wonder what's over that. Oh, Tashik, you know, Kanye West is completely, I, I believe Kanye West is waking up. I believe he's having a slow wake up to reality. I mean, because he said he agrees with Candace Owens. Candace, uh, uh, Candace Owens is way more conservative than I am. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. And he said he agrees with her. And then we can't forget what Kanye West, um, you know, uh, when he went on his rant about Jay-Z and the Illuminati and all that kind of stuff. And yes, uh, I do remember when Kanye West said that George Bush does not care about black people. That was just an emotional, typical liberal ploy. You know, no logic, all emotion. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Uh, I remember, uh, I think I was eating some popcorn and... I believe uh, my mouth was just hanging wide open when he said then the popcorn fell out. I think I think it was eating popcorn. I don't know. Popcorn or drinking pop. One of them. Either or. But um, you guys. I'm so sick of conservatives being fired. I'm sick of conservatives being attacked in the streets. We have seen numerous attacks on Trump supporters. We have seen uh, our white brothers who are in these universities, when they stand up to give their opinion, they're told to, to shut up because they're a privileged white male, which is reverse racism. We have seen in our universities, they're talking about, well, you know what? We're going to give a strong warning because this might be a microaggression and because it might intimidate someone. We have seen where conservatives want to go to some of these universities that is actually funded by our tax dollars and they have been turned away from speaking for exercising their freedom of speech on a government funded institution where it is completely illegal to tell a person they do not have the right to uh, have freedom of speech in a public fun funded institution. This is crazy. But anyway, so in California, they're talking about they don't want they were, they're thinking about passing this, this bill to make it illegal. Now, we've seen what has happened ever since uh, Obama opened up Pandora's box. The supposed to be Christian that I kept praising the Koran way more than he did Christianity. The one that hates America but loves the Middle East way more than America. The one that almost brought America to its knees. Anyway, when he said... Now, 75 percent of Americans at this time, they were against gay marriage. But when Barack Obama said, you know what? I believe that gays can get married. All of a sudden, the tide changed. He opened up Pandora's box. What has happened ever since? There are sons 
who are having sex with their mothers who want to get married. There have been cases with guys who are talking about they want to marry an animal because we don't have the right to tell them what the definition of marriage is. Do you see the arbitrary knobs turning on definition of marriage now ever since Obama opened up Pandora's box? We are witnessing now a guy like myself can say I am a woman and you will have to address me of a pronoun of my choosing. Uh, African-American like myself, I can just say I am an Asian and you will have to accept that or you will be considered a hate monger. <clears throat> this is insanity. This is godlessness. This is lawlessness. This is complete rebellion. This is uh, sedition. I can't say treason yet, but this is sedition that we are witnessing and it is plaguing our country, bringing us ever more so closely to the abyss and the generation iniquity that is going to be passed down from generation to generation is going to be so massive. You really think God is going to keep his hand on our country? <laughs> yeah, right. Read your Old Testament and see what happens when you have a godless society, how God actually responds to it. Oh, yeah, but now we also have postmodernism in Christianity where they teach that the Old Testament is completely irrelevant. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, I'm just doing my part. I'm just, uh, I'm just talking nothing but common sense. And this is why my YouTube channel got censored. Yes, that's why my channel got censored. Because all I'm just going to give you is the truth. Do you guys think I said anything that's hateful? Do you guys think I said anything that's intolerant? Do you guys believe I'm inciting uh, hatred? I am inciting violence? No, but they will accuse me of that. But here's the thing. They're going to be apprehensive to accuse me of that. Because you know why? I am an, uh, I'm an anomaly. I don't fit I don't fit the status quo for them to try to stamp me with that because I'm an African-American conservative. Eric, some of my videos, uh, well, majority of my videos were demonetized. They offer me the option now to try to monetize. But let me tell you something. The revenue that I actually have when I first started my channel, I lost 98% of it. And right now, I'm pretty sure it's, it's around 99.9% .9 of the revenue that I was making at first. They may play some ads, but let me tell you something, N nowhere, nowhere near the, the regular yield. They do that as a masquerade to say, no, your, your channel's not censored. I don't see my videos popping up anymore. My subscribers are still telling me, hey, Christian Duran, we have to actually search the YouTube now to find your videos. This is absolutely ridiculous. We have winced, we have witnessed the censorship of uh, uh, against conservatives uh, on Twitter. Let's just let's just say all the popular social media platforms. What is going on here? You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me that we are turning into some kind of a fascist regime. But they fooled to Trump who the people voted for him, not the establishment. I can't wait till we can get back to a true republic. And remember, I I'm going to tell you this. I don't want a democracy. I want a republic. That is ran by the people, not the government. The government has too much power. We are a status country right now, and we need to get back to a republic. And we're a status country under the dis disguise of democracy. Yeah, democracy of what? Do conservatives, uh, I mean, what, are they being diplomatic with conservatives? No. Anyway, you guys, that was just a few points I just wanted uh, to pontificate upon, but uh, I'm off my soapbox. 
Did you see the video of Twitter admitting to everything you said about? Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And it's kind of hard for me to stay up to date as I used to be when I was in ministry because, I mean, all I had was ministry and I wasn't, I didn't have my internship, so I was able to stay up to date with everything. I mean, now I have two other home-based businesses and I work full-time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really hard to stay up to date with everything, but I still manage to do it. This is my passion, you guys. You know, uh, I'm, I'm just using my spiritual gifts to teach truth. That's just me. Uh, anyway, love you guys. Uh, I can't believe I've um, actually went close to an hour. I love you all. Okay. You cannot say you love someone and you like action. Love is truth. It is. Love is patience. Love is praying for a person. Love is meekness. Love is forgiveness. But also love does not tolerate evil. It just, no, love doesn't. God doesn't even tolerate evil. But I want to leave, I want to leave you guys with this. Now, this, this might rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I'm going to say it with as much love as possible. If you consider yourself to be a liberal Christian, that is an oxymoron. By saying you are a liberal, mixing it together with a with Christian on the end of that, that means you support everything that is man made. Which goes against the scriptures. It's an oxymoron. You cannot serve two masters. Either you will love one and you will hate the other. There's no fence sitting in the kingdom. Either you're in or you're out. Anyway. You guys, stop putting your swords away. And I'm talking about metaphorically. <laughs> it's a metaphor. But anyway, I'm talking about your Bibles, okay? I'm talking about your Bibles. Stop putting your Bibles away. The world wants you to keep your Bibles put away. They want to keep you ignorant. That Bible brings you freedom. Use it. Pick it up. Live by it. Become bold. Speak the truth. Always give Always give an explanation for the hope in you. Always pray. But do everything we love, you guys. Do everything we love. Till next time, you guys. I love you all. Stay blessed. Submit to Christ. Bye-bye.